This video is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon make great earbuds with a great sound at an affordable price point. They're all about innovative earbud design at prices that don't break the bank. So they sent me a pair of these everyday E25 earbuds and I've been using them for a couple of days now. They easily fit in my ear. They deliver six hours of playtime. And what's great about them is the Bluetooth pairing, it just works. Uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but Bluetooth is sometimes a bit of a struggle. I like these, you take them out of the case, you pop them in and boom, it just works just like that. Plus they come in this case, gives you four charges. So once they're dead up here, you just pop them in there. Four more chargers in this case. Now I've used cheap earbuds, I've used expensive earbuds, but what Raycon do is they deliver a premium experience at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds. So go to buyraycon.com forward slash brain food and you'll get 15% off your order. And let's get into today's video. If Daredevil has taught us anything, it's that while a closely guarded secret within the blind community, blind people inevitably all become superheroes after losing their sight thanks to their other senses being insanely enhanced. But when talking about the real world, does this enhancing of one's other senses really occur when the lights go out permanently? Well, for those who hate us droning on, the one sentence answer is that absolutely yes, but also no, not at all. And this. It's why our videos are longer than this. You see, it turns out the universe hates things being black and white, and almost nothing is in reality, which may come as a shock to anyone who's ever read the news or used social media ever. So let's dive in, shall we? First, let's talk about the general case. Do blind people in general have enhanced hearing and other senses? Well, the answer is no, not even a little bit, with a caveat that we'll get to in a moment that is quite fascinating. But for now, in the general case, no, the eardrum doesn't become more sensitive or any other such change in the hardware. In fact, in this general case, again with a caveat that we'll get into in a moment, nothing particular seems to change with the brain either. In fact, not just indicated by countless studies, but also for those who hate science and only believe in anecdotal accounts because, well, that's unfortunately a thing, blind people themselves have found that they agree with this notion and feel that their sense of hearing or touch is no better than that of a sighted person. So why do blind people seem to perceive things better with their other senses than the sighted? Well, in short, because they're paying attention and they practice like crazy simply because they have no choice. For example, when a sighted person hears a car, their natural inclination is not to try and tell from the sound how far away that car is, but to simply look and see how far away that car is. The same is true when touching something or countless other such things when the eyes are open and looking. They are going to determine the perception of what you're experiencing. And note here, not just a perceived domination, it turns out our brain scans show that when this is happening, the brain is quite literally inhibiting activation of the areas controlling other senses. This is presumably why when you're trying to really hear something well, your natural inclination is to close your eyes. Or similarly, when you're really trying to focus on something visual, Usually, such as driving in a complex environment, you'll turn down the radio so you can see better. <laughs> I'm just realizing how absurd that is, but it is something I do all the time. And speaking of that, for a sighted person, close your eyes and really listen or feel, and it turns out you'll perceive things just as well as a blind person, with the caveat that blind people become massively more practiced in various ways, and this experience can, in turn, lend to better perceived perception. For example, while if you close your eyes and hear a TV next to you, you might correctly judge approximately where the TV is and be able to point to it and say about how far away it is, a blind person would instinctively also realize that probably means there is a wall right behind the TV too, and might even be able to tell approximately how far away the wall is from the way the sound is bouncing. Further, with amazing amounts of practice judging car noises, for example, telling how far away the thing is with better accuracy becomes more and more natural without conscious thought. It's simply practice rather than the development of an ability to hear things that a sighted person can't. Perhaps no example illustrates this better than when speaking of echolocation, which many a blind person with a bit of practice gets quite good at. However, according to a 2014 survey paper, a summary of research investigating echolocation abilities of blind and sighted humans, with practice, sighted people are able to get just as good at this particular skill. Similarly, a blind person might use their cane to tap things and be able to tell what the 
surfaces based on the sound and general feel through the cane. But this too is not a superior perception, it's just experience, practice, and, you know, just paying attention. But all that's not very interesting, and we did promise you a caveat. And it is a super fascinating one at that. You see, it turns out for some blind people, they do gain the ability for genuine superior hearing, at least with regards to certain aspects of hearing. So, well, what's going on here? Well, it turns out recent research has concluded that in people blinded from birth or very early in their life, the brain actually really does rewire itself, so to speak, to process auditory and touch sensory input differently than a sighted person's brain does. The result is, for example, verifiable superior hearing with one caveat because Again, apparently the universe just hates simplicity. To do this rewiring, the brain goes ahead and uses a portion of it that in this individual simply is going unused, with their auditory cortex essentially hijacking the visual cortex to confer what essentially amounts to more processing power for auditory input to this region of the brain. This curious phenomenon is referred to as cross-modal neuroplasticity, or more technically, it's just known as witchcraft. For a little more detail, experiments conducted at the Oregon Health and Science University have found that in early blind individuals, the medial occipital is particularly active, while these blinds from birth or early age individuals are processing the location of sounds. In a sighted person, this region of the brain is dedicated to registering visual signals by setting the threshold at which they are noticed, a function that is essentially useless in the brain of a person who cannot see. But no more. Life. Uh, finds a way. Interestingly, no such similar brain activity is noted in individuals who become blind at a later point in their life, which begs the question, well, why? The leading hypothesis is that in early development, the human brain is much more malleable than it is in later life, and the areas that process sensors are largely connected. As a person ages and learns to process various sensory inputs, these connections are severed or weakened where unused or where things are adapting strongly for a specific purpose. However, in a person blinded from a young age, since they never learn to process visual input properly, these connections remain intact and simply get used for something somewhat similar, but via a different sense. The net effect is verifiably better hearing for certain tasks. Exactly how much keener a blind person's hearing is in these cases, however, is not yet clear. But small-scale experiments have shown that these blind individuals can usually outperform sighted people in many hearing-related tests tests, such as picking up changes in pitch or the location of a sound monaural, or in layman's terms, with only one ear. That said, yet another fascinating thing is that while this adaptation comes with enhancements in some aspects of hearing, it actually seems to hurt the blind person's ability to perceive the direction and location of sound if it is coming from well above or well below them. In other words, the enhanced perception on the direction or front only seems to apply to horizontal direction, otherwise sighted people actually perform better or as well at determining such vertical direction. Why this is the case isn't really understood at all, but it clearly shows up in testing. One more interesting thing to note here is that it turns out similar types of things occur when talking about, for example, someone who is born able to see but not hear. So this might have you wondering, if the brain is sort of rewiring itself to use a portion of itself normally dedicated for something else, what happens if you turn back on the dormant sense, such as with cochlear implants for deaf people? Well, it turns out, in many cases, the brain simply can't easily readjust back, and these individuals often struggle with understanding what they're hearing. That said, because this area of research is quite new, much more needs to be done to see if this can be undone in these cases with proper training programs and things like that. As contrary to a long-held perception before, it turns out even when we humans are particularly well-seasoned, the brain is still surprisingly adaptable in many, though not all, cases. For an example of where it can't, as we've covered before in detail when talking about deaf people, they really, really need to learn some complex language before the age of around 5 to 8-ish. If they do not, they often lose the ability to do so at a normal level or even have normal cognitive abilities after at all. Before complex sign languages and the like, this was largely why deaf people throughout history were thought to be mentally deficient. It wasn't that they were born this way, though. In most cases, their brains were perfectly normal. It was that their brain needed a language to function properly, and they weren't taught one. Eventually, the issues with their cognitive function becomes permanent, even if you attempt in later years to teach them a language. 
But going back to this specific example of the brain's ability to rewire something that had already been co-opted for other uses, those who, say, could hear from childhood, lost their hearing later in life, then got it back potentially decades later, they often have no such issues with processing sounds after, as their brain did not make this sort of adaptation and has some pre-wiring still there, even if it's just been unused for some time. So to conclude, individuals who are either born blind or blinded at a very early age do in fact seem to hear better than a sighted person in many ways. Although curiously, when talking about vertical directional sounds above or below, they struggle with this or are no better than everyone else for some inexplicable reason. As for the rest of blind individuals, the perception of being able to hear better is not so much about actual superior hearing, simply that they are paying attention and are much more practiced at listening to the nuances of sounds and the implications of them. Take a sighted person and give them a bit of training or just have them close their eyes and focus and they they are generally perfectly capable of the same thing. And now for some bonus facts. Ever wonder how deaf people think? Well, one to know more. Those who were born completely deaf and only learned sign language will, as it turns out, have an inner voice that thinks in sign language. What is somewhat more fascinating is that those who were born completely deaf but learned to speak through vocal training will occasionally think not only in the particular sign language that they know, but also will sometimes think in the vocal language they learned with their brains coming up with how the vocal language sounds even though they've never heard it. That said, for the most part, most completely deaf people think in sign language. Similar to how an inner voice of a hearing person is experienced in one's own voice, a completely deaf person sees or more aptly feels themselves signing in their head as they talk in their heads. For those deaf people who are not completely deaf or wear devices to allow them to hear somewhat, they will often experience more vocal language in their inner voice in proportion to how much they can hear. Incidentally, going back to the whole not teaching deaf people a language thing, it turns out completely deaf people who are forced to use only spoken language and never taught a sign language are only slightly better off than those who know no language in terms of their brain functions. Their brains simply never fully associate spoken language they have never heard in the way sign language gets ingrained as a language, causing inner voice issues, which is necessary for our brains to process information properly. Further, learning language seems extremely integral to ability to later process abstract thoughts. These individuals do gain significantly more sense of self and better memory and the like over those who have no language. But in this stage, they will never fully reach their brain's potential, as in when they learn a sign language. As noted by Professor David Wood, a leading deaf educationalist at Nottingham University, there is still a lot of debate over what are the minimal levels of exposure needed to stimulate the language centers. But it is clear that deaf children need early experience of some sort of language if they are going to be good communicators in later life. Because of these findings, the oralist method of teaching the deaf that had endured for just under 100 years in relatively modern times is being rapidly phased out in favor of a bilingual education where sign language is taught as early as possible and vocal language is taught as a sort of secondary language to help the deaf more easily integrate with the hearing world rather than doing it the other way around or forcing only vocal language. That said, as noted by Miranda Pickersgill, Chief of Deaf Services for Leeds Local Education Authority, bilingualism is still very much a hot potato. We have come in for a lot of flack and been accused of pushing deaf people into a signing ghetto. Yet the deaf had a big price to pay when the old methods failed. Not only could they not communicate, but they were left without a code to think in. We can no longer ignore what the research tells us. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, support this show by supporting our fantastic sponsor, Raycon. There is a link to them below. And thank you for watching.